Hello everyone, my name is Mingma and I'll be presenting on the Bacterial Transformation Lab from Biology 110 at Duke Kunshan University. Okay, so we will be covering a brief introduction on understanding the concepts of bacterial transformation and then we will look at the process of the lab experiment and then finally we'll talk a little about the real world application of the bacterial transformation process. Okay, so first let's start by understanding what bacterial transformation is. Bacterial transformation is the process of introducing a foreign DNA into a bacterium, and this is done with the help of a circular DNA called the plasmid. Like the one shown in the figure, plasmids that are used for transformation process must have the following basic components. The first one is the origin of replication. It is a site where the DNA polymerase and associated proteins attach to start the replication process. Second is the multiple cloning site. It is a region that contains multiple different restriction enzyme sites that allow the plasmid to be cut by a variety of different enzymes. The third one is a selectable marker. It is a gene that produces a protein that allows the transformed bacteria to survive under conditions where untransformed bacteria cannot. Okay, so now let's on, um, on onto this figure, which is about understanding the pr process of transformation. So basic understanding of the process is is that we have the gene of interest, which is the gene for the human growth hormone that is cut out from the human genome. And we also have a plasmid from the bacterial cell. The restriction enzyme cuts a specific segment of the plasmid, which opens up the circular DNA. And then the segment from the human gene is inserted into that space. Now we have a recombinant DNA where the bacterial plasmid has a segment of the human gene. This recombinant DNA is inserted back into the bacterium and that's how it can transcribe the protein associated with human growth. And now we can say that the bacteria has been transformed. I hope this gives you a brief under understanding and overview of the transformation process. Okay, so now let's move on to talk about what changes this transformation process brings to the bacterial culture by taking a specific selectable marker into consideration. Here we're using the PUC19 plasmid, which contains the amphicillin resistance gene and the laxase gene, which encodes for the beta, beta galactosidase enzyme. This antibiotic amphicillin inhibits the cell wall synthesis, and bacterial cells cannot survive in this condition. However, in presence of the amphicillin-resistant gene, an enzyme that is produced, which breaks down the amphicillin before it affects the cell. The laxi gene here encodes the beta-galactosidase enzyme, but since it is not a housekeeping gene, it can only be activated, activated in the presence of gal galactose. Here, instead of galactose, we use IPTG as a non-substrate substitute that can induce the laxi gene. In presence of beta galactosidase, X-gal, which is a color-producing substrate, is hydrolyzed to form an insoluble blue pigment and turns the colonies on the plate blue. As you can see in the figure, the bacterial cells that have um, undergone transformation are able to express the amphicillin resistant gene and the laxi gene, which explains their ability to survive in the amphicillin medium, as well as the blue pigment visible, which confirms the transcription of the laxi gene, while the ones without the plasmid cannot survive, as shown here. Okay. Now let's move on to do the lab experiment. So this diagram shows a brief overview of the experiment. Firstly, 100 microliters of competent cells are used. The reason for using competent cells is because it can easily take in foreign DNA. Then we pour 100 microliter cell suspension into two different tubes with 50 microliters in each, like the one that is shown in the figure. And then we add the PUC19 um, plasmid in one of them and incubate both the tubes in ice for 20 minutes. We then place the tubes in a 42 degree hot water bath to provide heat shocks for 45 seconds, and then place them into ice and incubate them for two minutes. Then we add the LB mix to each tube, which is the liquid growing medium. Then we incubate the tubes at 37 degrees for 20 minutes with shaking and then centrifuge it for 60 seconds. Then we remove the supernatant and now we have two tubes with one of them containing the plasmid and the other that does not. These cell suspension is then, are then spread out into the plates uh, with one plate contain, containing the amphicillin medium in, in one of the each groups that are presented here. Then we look at the observation to confirm whether the presence of the plasmid has provided the bacterial culture the ability to survive in the amphicillin medium. And we also look for the presence of blue pigment to check if the laxi gene is being transcribed at the same time. At the end of our experiment, we had some important discussion points to go over. 
first. Um, in this experiment, we had three control groups checking for the survival of bacterial cells and with any one of the provided criteria is missing. For example, either no amphicillin control group, no plasmid control group, or no amphicillin and plasmid control group. One of the groups with the amphicillin and the plasmid was the only group that was the non-control group. Second, the insertion of gene into the plasmid. We should insert the gene in the multiple coning site because that region contains binding sites for many restriction enzymes. So different enzymes can cut that segment of the plasmid gene and insert the gene of interest in that location. Third, understanding how culture of bacteria develop resistance against a specific antibiotic. Sometimes a single strand uh, or a single bacterial cell under a stressful medium like exposure to a particular antibiotic undergoes mutation and it is able to survive um, in that medium. In this case, only one bacterial cell gains resistance, but because bacteria have the plasmid, which can be transferred from one bacteria to another during the process of conjugation, it is very easy for the, any recombinant or resistant genes to be passed on to many other bacteria in the colony. And this is how the entire uh, culture gains resistance. The last point is the production of the protein. Scientists add selectable markers to the plasmid gene and insert them into bacterial cells. Then when these cells are introduced to a stressful medium, only the bacteria that were transformed are able to produce a specific protein that helps them um, to survive. And the transformed cells start multiplying in number, and that is how they can amplify the gene of interest, which is how they can produce the vast amount of the required protein. Okay. So Continuing talking about the possibility of, the, uh, of producing vast quantities of protein, I'd like to introduce a real-world application of the bacterial transformation process. We know that insulin is an important hormone used for glucose metabolism in the human body, and people will, with type 1 diabetes cannot produce insulin. That is why most people with this condition require insulin to be injected into their bodies to survive. That is why for the lar large-scale production of insulin, scientists rely on the process of bacterial transformation. Um, let's look at how this is done in, in the first place. So first, the scientists have um, the insulin, a human insulin gene in their labs, and then they remove a loop of the material of DNA called the plasmid out of the bacteria. Then they insert the human gene into the plasmid. Once the bacteria is transformed, they introduce the pa plasmid that has has been transformed into the bacteria. Um, that is when the recombinant bacteria uses the gene to produce the human insulin. In this process, because of horizontal transfer of gene between bacteria, many other bacteria also become transformed. So a large amount of insulin can be produced. And finally, the purified form of the insulin from the bacteria is used as a medicine for people with type 1 diabetes. So that, that, that is how bacterial transformation has been very successful in large-scale production of the required protein. Um, so yeah, that is the end of our presentation. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and hope this video makes you more interested in understanding the concept of bacterial transformation. Finally, I would like to thank my biology professor, Dr. Lee, for organizing a very interesting lab and very fun Bio 110 session at Duke Kunshan University, and also my university for providing uh, students with resources to do experiments that help understand real-world application of scientific concepts. Thank you for listening and have a great day.